when we talk about change in the real world, it's really important to be careful about how we talk about the size of changes that we see. And in particular, there's two different ways to talk about a difference in size or a change in something. One is called the absolute change, and the other is called the relative change. Absolute change is kind of like asking the question, by what number did the measurement change? Whereas relative change is often talked about using a percent, sometimes just a decimal, but it's really comparing the numerical change to the size of whatever you were talking about to begin with. For example, think about the Earth and a tire. We're actually about to do examples about the Earth and a tire. They're both spheres, and we can both talk about their radiuses. We could talk about how the size of the Earth changes if we take into account the atmosphere, or how the size of a tire changes if you take into account the, the rim at the top. Um, let's suppose the radius of the Earth is 39, 3,959 miles, and the atmosphere is seven miles out from that radius, so it's seven additional miles, which gives you a total radius, a new radius, of 3,966 miles. Along the same vein, let's suppose we're talking about a tire, and the, the radius of the tire just up to the rim is 24 inches, and then the actual tire adds an extra 3 inches onto the radius. So the radius is, it's not really growing, but it's the difference between 24 and then 27. At face value, when we just look at the numbers, you might say, oh, it looks like the atmosphere puts a bigger change on the radius of the Earth than the tire does. And you might say that because 7 is bigger than 3, or because 7 miles truly is an enormous amount compared to 3 inches. But the truth is, if we look closely, and you think about 7 miles in the context of the fact that we're already talking about something huge, Seven miles is actually a tiny, tiny, tiny change. We can see the numbers. In fact, let me show you the numbers here. If we're talking about the Earth, the absolute change in this situation, the absolute difference between the two radiuses we've talked about is seven miles. And again, that's just the numerical difference. How much bigger is the Earth with the atmosphere than without it? The relative change we would get by dividing the numerical change by the size of the Earth in the beginning. In this case, that would mean dividing 7 divided by 39.59, which comes out to a decimal of 0 0.0017, or 0.17%. That's a truly tiny amount of change. This is saying that actually 7 miles may seem like a huge atmosphere, but when you put it in the context of the Earth's size, it's a tiny little additional distance. The radius of the tire, on the other hand, the absolute change is 3 inches. That's how much additional length that the tire adds onto the radius, which doesn't seem like very much. But when we put that 3 inches relative to how big the tire is, we essentially divide it by 24, and that gives us 0.125 as your relative change, which is like 12%. So actually, even though it looked initially like this was a tiny amount of change, the additional distance added by a tire is a much bigger in relationship to the size of the tire. It makes a bigger difference, at least in the context of what we're talking about. This difference between absolute and relative change is one of the ways people lie with statistics, and we're not going to go into detail with that here, but it's something maybe you want to think about in the context of the world. If someone comes to you with a really surprising number, you might want to pause and ask yourself, is that number really surprising in the context of what we're talking about, or is it just surprising when I first look at it? We'll end today's video with two final examples, word problem examples. Example number three, inflating a bicycle tire changes its radius from 12 inches to 13 inches. Use differentials to estimate the absolute change and relative change in the perimeter of the tire. What are we trying to find? Exactly, the change in the perimeter. And when we hear that word change, what do we think? Exactly, we think of a differential.
It's a small change in something. Um, how about the given information? What all do we know here? Right, we know that a bicycle tire is circular shaped, and we know that the radius started out as 12 and changed by one inch. Notice I'm not even really writing the 13 down because what we care about is how it changed. What would I want to write as my equation? How am I going to start this? Right, I need a function whose output is perimeter and input is radius. And then eventually I'm going to use that function to solve for the differential. What function is that? Right, so hopefully you remembered that perimeter is the same thing as circumference, so it's just 2 pi r. And I'm going to go ahead and take the derivative right away because I know I'm going to need it later. In this case, the derivative is actually just a constant. It's just 2 pi. It's just that number. And now I've got all my pieces. I can put it together using the differential equation. The differential for perimeter is going to equal the derivative of the perimeter function times dr, the differential for the radius. And since the derivative function is just 2 pi, this is actually just 2 pi times dr. The next step is to plug in. Usually we would plug in for r and for dr. But this function expression doesn't have an r in it, so really all I need to plug in is dr. And we end up with dp equaling 2 pi. You do need to end with a sentence. What does 2 pi tell us here? And notice I favor the if-then statements. I would say if we increase the radius by 1 inch, the perimeter will experience an absolute change of 2 pi inches. How did I know that this was absolute change? Right, this is actually the number for how much the perimeter increases. If we want to find the relative change, which we're about to do, we would take this number and we would divide it by what? That's right, the relative change would be dp divided by the original perimeter. That's actually not a number that we have. We'd have to go back and find it. So we've got the perimeter equation right here. If the original radius was 12, what was the original perimeter? Perfect, yeah, it would be 24 pi. So if I want to add relative change, which I am supposed to in the problem here, I'm going to take the change in the perimeter and divide it by how big the perimeter was originally. So I'm going to do 2 pi divided by 24 pi, which is 0 0.0833. In other words, 8.33%. We could say if I change the radius by one inch, the perimeter will increase by 8%. Take a look at example four and see if you can get set up. What are we trying to find? What information do we really have given to us? How are we going to get there? I would say we're trying to find the change in the surface area. And that's because the question says, what effect would the tolerance have on the surface area? In other words, how is the surface area going to change? Now, what we're given is the radius of the sphere. And then when they say the word tolerance, maybe you remember this from Algebra 2, this is saying that the radius could change by up to 0.1 miles. In other words, 0.1 represents dr. How am I going to start the problem? That's right, we're looking for the change in surface area, so we need to start with an equation for surface area, which maybe you just Google, or maybe you have memorized. From there, we'll find the derivative of this, and then we'll use the differential equation. The calculations look like this, and we end up with a humongous change in surface area of 9,950. Okay, but wait, this looks humongous because it's the absolute change. Maybe the relative change isn't so great. How would I find the relative change? Right, I need to divide this by the original surface area, which I need to figure out. So the original surface area, I would plug R into this equation. And that turns out to be an enormous number. And so if I divide my change in surface area by, by that original number, I actually end up with a really tiny number, a number that corresponds 0.0051%, less than a hundredth of a percent, actually about a half of a hundredth of a percent, which is not a very big change at all, even though it looks like it's big. All right, that should be it for today's video.
at the end of this section, you should be able to explain what a differential is, and you should be able to use them to calculate change. See you in class.